All right, guys. <clears throat> Welcome to the do all granite surface plate. That is not completely flat and true because I haven't had it calibrated yet. That's something that we're going to be working on here real soon. Hopefully, in the coming month, this is going to be sent down and uh, have calibrated and lapped. I, I know that it's out. I've been doing a little bit of playing here and there on the granite plate, just uh, basically for my own benefit, getting a little familiar with this type of metrology and measuring. I've said it before, this kind of stuff right here is not a lot of measuring that I did coming up through the job shop. Uh, most of my stuff was just basically lay the milk, um, lathe work, mill work, using micrometers, things like that. The high precision stuff we really didn't get into very much. So just for our shop, it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of call for it. And whenever there was, I remember that's when Sonny was there and he and dad kind of handled that stuff while I was out there shoveling chips and uh, being the, uh, the do boy. But uh, anyway, what I wanted to get a little video of is this cylindrical square that I recently got from Jack Hoing. And uh, he gave me a really good purchase on this right here. Didn't have to pay a whole lot of money for it. And the thing is, is that you got to be able to check it to see if it's any good or not. So I've been playing with it for the past couple of weeks, trying to get familiar with it and getting a, a uh, solid setup for it to maintain the, the measurements every time I measure it, every time I move it and then remeasure it, seeing if it maintains, seeing if it's a stable setup is what I'm talking about. So I've done a little bit of measurements. These are the numbers that I've been getting so far. What I want to do is kind of compare and show you what I've been doing and see how close to these numbers we can get, see if we can get it to repeat. Lately, I've been able to get it repeat within one-tenth just about every time. Sometimes it hits it right on. So we're, we're repeating within about a tenth, sometimes maybe two tenths. One of the things you have to take consideration is, like I already said, this plate probably is not flat. I'll imagine that you're going to have more wear in the middle of it, out here in the middle close to the edges, probably out here on the corners may be higher than the other. So we're not going to get a perfect reading. And that's something that you have to take into the equation is that you may be off 10 or 20% off of your readings. So we want to try to see if this thing is bent or if it's straight, square, parallel, perpendicular to the base here. I've got an old cast iron angle plate set up right here that is a well-used angle plate. That was my dad's. It's a really high quality unit and it's pretty dang square. It has been used quite a bit. There's a lot of dings on it. I filed it, stoned it, and tried to get it as flat as I could so there wasn't no burrs sticking up somewhere. Same thing with the V-block right here. I cleaned it real well. It's just a, a surface that shouldn't change that the, the uh, cylindrical square is sitting down on. So hopefully it's in that same height because this OD of the cylindrical square is supposed to be completely true with this right here. All right, I've got it clamped to the angle plate over here. Now, when I was first doing this, I had a couple more of the cant twist over here on the side clamping it, and I never could get a consistent reading. Every time I would move it, I would clamp those things in there and never would read the right. And I figured out that what I was doing was moving it by clamping it on here so the angle plate is not completely flat. I found that if I was to take this little spring clamp right here and just use it on the top like so and leave it alone, it would repeat within about a tenth every time. So I think that's the uh, part of the issue is the, the angle plate right here. So I've got four quadrants marked on there. We've got one and three, two and four. And that's kind of how I'm doing the readings is just kind of measuring opposite from one another. Uh, one, you know, I measured one and I go to three. So in this case, we'll go ahead and start with three and I've got zero and 15. Now what that's representing is tenths. So instead of saying 15 tenths, I'm just going to say 15. And this, you know, down here at number one, I had minus one and 10. So that's minus one tenth and then 10 would be, you know, plus on the plus side of it. The other thing you got to keep in mind on these inner rapids is that it's reading opposite counterclockwise is your positive clockwise motion is negative 
This is a really nice brown and sharp height gauge that was given to me last year. Uh, one of the guys that was at the uh, NYCNC open house, uh, I apologize, I can't remember the name, uh, who it was that gave me, uh, give this to me, but I'm using it. I've got this brown and sharp adapter that's come that I put in here to hold the test indicator and it's working out to be a pretty good stable setup. I've already wiped it off, wiped everything off, so hopefully there's no dust. And let's go ahead and give it a shot. So we're at 0 and 15. Let's see if I repeat that. Okay, so I'm getting 14 on that. So hopefully the camera's picking it up. I tried to get the Sony in there so that you could see it. So it looks like about 14. I'm going to come up in here all the way, all the way up against, right close to that radius. And I'm getting minus one. So that's repeating, oh, I'm sorry, three. So zero. So we're one tenth off on both ends right there. All right, so let's go ahead and go to one. So I'm just going to hold my finger on the end of this, try to keep it flat, try not to bang it around. And I'm just going to spin it. And we'll put the clamp back on it. So now we'll read one. So we're at minus one and 10. So the outer end, which is here, is going to be hopefully 10. And I'm getting about nine. So again, about a tenth off. All right, nine there. We were at minus one. Let's see what we get. Minus two. Okay, so again, <laughs> a tenth. Minus two, so a tenth off. And then sometimes you can come out here, move the, the base out here to the middle of the plate, and you're getting a different reading than what you were. Okay, so there's a... There's minus eight. So I'm trying to just do all my measurements from right here on this edge to try to get repeatability right there. All right, let's go ahead and move it around to two. All right, and we're at minus one and 15. So it'll be about 15 out here on the very end. And I'm getting 14. All right, let's come up in here. So what are we gonna get? Minus two? It's about minus one and a half. There's two. You get about a half a tenth difference depending on which direction you go. Pretty close, within a tent. All right, our last one is going to be position four, so we're going to rotate it 180 degrees. Minus one and 12. Looks like Minus 11 and a half, about a, a half a tenth off on that one difference. We said minus one, uh, about minus two there. Okay, so you see every every position I'm within one tenth. So the I think the the setup is pretty stable, but I think my weakness is the actual angle plate. Probably the uh, the V block as well. So, what are how do we uh, how do we determine if we've got a square or not? Well, what this is telling me is that around the two to three. Let's go ahead and let's set this down. It looks like you know somewhere around the two to three position, we're straight. But on the other side over here, we've got a little bit off. So one and four, somewhere around on this side, 
we're off a little bit a couple of tenths you know two or three tenths or so and again you're reading arrow on this on this bad plate as well so it's hard to determine how much you're in and I was talking to uh, Tom Lipton about this he gave me a lot of good pointers on how to set this up and how to check that and I give him the numbers and he says that this uh, this would be about 80 percent correct so we've got probably about a 20 percent there that we're unsure of so part of that is in the cylindrical square itself and part of that's going to be in the, the plate not being flat and then the other part's going to be in the uh, the setup right here, you know, with the angle plate and everything. So um, I think we have a pretty close cylindrical, cylindrical square, but I don't think it's perfect. But if you look at these numbers, if you look at those numbers, these are all right there at the base. So that's pretty consistent. That's pretty, that's pretty good right there. But we've got a little bit of tilt on one section out here at the end. So... What I'd, what I'd like to do is whenever I, after I get the granite plate back in a couple months or so and make sure that it's, um, it's lapped in nice and flat, then we can start working on some better setups and, and rechecking this stuff to see how, how good it is, how square it is. So anyway, I just kind of wanted to share that with you guys today. It's a nice weekend and I've been making some videos and I wanted to get over here and make another little video to follow up on the cylindrical square and uh, hope you enjoyed and we'll see you real soon.